Hi students, so this week we're gonna dive more into examples of dynamic programming. We're gonna do two particular interesting cases where you can get a fast algorithm and solve an interesting problem using DP, dynamic programming. So these two examples are the longest increasing subsequence and the longest common subsequence between two sequences. So I'll explain what those are in a little bit. I'm actually gonna hand off a lot of the explanations to Professor Eric Vagoda, who's also faculty at Georgia Tech, to do uh, uh, these explanations because he already has some actually great videos on this. Um, but before I do that, I, uh, I just wanna hand it off to uh, my, my colleague, Professor Crape, because uh, he actually wants to do uh, a dance number for the students. So I'm gonna give it to him. Um, so take it away, Professor Crape. Excuse me? What was that? You would like me to do a dance number for the students? Are you crazy? I would never do a dance number for students. Hmm. Okay, before I send you off to watch Professor Vigoda's lectures on the longest increasing subsequence, which is today's lecture, I just want to remind folks that the difficult and interesting thing about uh, dynamic programming solutions is that what you have to do is break the problem up, which is some big problem, let's say of length n, into solving some smaller instances of the, of the problem. We call them subproblems. So uh, to solve the ith iteration of the subproblem, somehow you can recurse to smaller iterations of the, of the subproblem. Maybe, for example, in terms of you can solve L of i, you may have to reduce that to L of i minus 1. Um, but there are other things. You may, you may be able to recurse deeper into the sequence. The hard part, though, is coming up with what are the subproblems. Um, typically, the first thing you try, the first uh, way you break the problem up into subproblems is not the correct one. The intuitive, natural thing you would try isn't going to work. You're going to see Professor Vergoda explain that. Let me just emphasize that with the uh, case of um, the lane-changing example that I described in the last lecture, what I mean by that. So let, let's just go through that example. So you guys remember this problem before? We had the optimal way of changing lanes. Uh, I think it was Peter Gibbon who's looking to change lanes and get through traffic as fast as possible. If you knew the speeds of the various segments, let's say you have these various nodes in the highway, and you knew the speed it took to get from uh, node to successive node, what would be the optimal sequence of lane changes to take to get from the start to the end? We broke this problem down into a sequence of sub-problems, um, and those are, we solved those sub-problems in green, if you remember, I, I wrote down, I, I, I computed these, these, these distances in green. What were those values? What were those numbers? Like, for example, here we have the number 29. What was that number? If you recall, what we were computing there was the shortest path to begin at the start node and end at this particular node, right? So um, the, number, the green number 4 here, we arrived at 4 um, uh, for, for this first node on the right. Um, we arrived at four because the shortest path from the start node to that node, there's actually only one path we can take, it's through this, 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 this bottom edge. Um, that's a distance of four because it takes four seconds, we said, what was written in red, four seconds to get from uh, uh, the beginning, the start node, to this initial node. And then we're able to recurse on that, right, then to get from this uh, upper right, this, this upper right node here that has a number 19 on it, right, to get there. Um, we, we asked ourselves, what was the shortest path to get there? Well, first we said if we came from this node that was marked with 15 um, and then paid 10, that's not as good as coming from this uh, bottom node, which um, is marked 4, and then paying 15 from there, because 15 plus 4 is 19. Um, but the key thing to note here is that we had to realize, to solve this big problem, we had to realize we could break it into these smaller subproblems. In this case, the smaller subproblem is computing the shortest distance from the start node to an intermediate node. Um, it, without having seen the solution, it might not be obvious that that's the right way to solve this problem. It takes a little bit of ingenuity to come up with this correct subproblem. So when you're solving these dynamic programming problems, just keep in mind that the hard part is coming up with the correct subproblem and then figuring out how you can recursively solve them in this iterative fashion, right? How you can reduce solving one problem to um, a smaller instance of that problem. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to de design dynamic programming algorithms that um, the real intelligent piece is figuring out what are the subproblems and, and how do you uh, solve them iteratively. So keep that in mind for the two problems we'll be looking at next. The first is longest increasing subsequence and the second is the longest common subsequence. I'm going to now toss it to Professor Vigoda's lecture so you can uh, see how to solve the LIS problem uh, now. <laughs>